a man. Peyton Manning stepping out. It's the Zion Show. Pass is caught by John. The men's NCAA SEC basketball tournament is here at the Gaylord Entertainment Center. And the Florida Gators, the defending conference tournament champions against the reigning outright 2006 regular season title holders, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Here's how they got here. South Carolina, the Cinderella story, could steal a bid with a win tomorrow after beating the Big Blue for the first time in semifinal play. Kentucky goes down in an SEC tournament. And coming up next, LSU and Florida. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Brando. It's wonderful to have you with us. Clearly the two most talented teams will be on display today. And as I bring in Joe Dean Jr., it is about perhaps the best starting five against the team with the most depth today. Yeah, we saw a lot of perimeter action in the first semifinal today. The second semifinal is gonna be a lot of inside action. Right here, you see some of that action. The Florida Gators led by the leading three-point shooter in the league, Lee Humphrey. And then, of course, what can you say about the SEC Player of the Year, Glenn Big Baby Davis. He was awesome last night, Tim. I don't know that I've ever seen an MVP player in this league do any better in a conference tournament in his first game than Davis did last night. How about your Pontiac keys to the game? Well, I'm not going to sing tonight, today, but uh, for Florida, no Big Baby love. They want to <laughs> attack big baby with their big people Noah and Horford today and neutralize the big fella for the LSU Tigers they are loose relaxed no pressure playing with tremendous confidence simply put they want to continue to do that today the winner will be taking on a team that would be singing oh I believe maybe the road to Oz Cinderella's South Carolina awaits the winner of LSU in Florida and it is next Welcome back to the Gaylord Entertainment Center here in Nashville, Tennessee. Our semifinal between the Florida Gators and the Fighting Tigers of LSU about to get underway. Let's take a look at the starting five for Billy Donovan's team. And Corey Brewer held to nine points last night. Ronnie Brewer did a nice job defensively against him. But when he gets going along with those bigs, Horford and Noah, look out. Torian Green and Lee Humphrey, who we talked about. And Humphrey had his best game since that shoulder injury. Uh, sidelined him for a part of the regular season. Tasman Mitchell, the unsung star, Joe, of this team, 20 points against Vanderbilt, and everyone, when you think about it, Ben Food came off the bench and played well to go along with Davis, Lazar, Temple, and Mitchell. Let's get the buzz from the Gatorade cooler from Dave Baker. Hey, Timmy, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about what happens in the paint today, but backcourt attrition could well be one of the big keys. Daryl Mitchell tweaked that ankle that's bothered him for much of the second half of the season. John Brady said he would go, albeit not at 100%. He's not risking further injury. And Torian Green, the Gators got that late win last night. Green had a short night. He spent most of it with what is called flu-like symptoms. They got some IVs in him this morning, and he's ready to go. And the opening tap one to LSU. I was talking to Butch Pierre, the assistant coach, an outstanding recruiter for LSU. I asked him about Daryl Mitchell. He said that Coach Brady asked him, he said, well, about uh, defensively because of your ankle, think you can handle Green? He's like, I can handle Green. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You ever heard a player say he couldn't? Uh, turned it over to open. And here's Humphrey on the wing, knocking down the first three-pointer of the afternoon. Now he's been on fire of late, Lee Humphrey, just a tremendous spot shooter, and that time the penetration by Torian Green drew Colin, or Garrett Temple to him and left uh, Humphrey open. Last time these two played, LSU lost, and it was uh, their last loss of the season. Big Baby Davis uh, had a decent game. Tyrus Thomas was really taken away by the Florida defense, as you see Tasman Mitchell making a strong move to the glass. Today, Florida will not have to worry about Tyrus Thomas as he sits out uh, with that high ankle sprain of his. We're hoping to get him to practice on Tuesday of this coming week and have him ready for the big dance either Thursday or Friday. Billy Donovan, the dean of coaches in the Southeastern Conference with a final four and championship game appearance in his hip pocket. 11 and eight, his career record in the Southeastern Conference tournament and champion of this event a year ago. Davis, not this time. Joakim Noah brings it down for Florida. Glenn Davis was on fire last night with the 28, but shooting from the perimeter was, was so impressive by him off to uh, 
A slow start with the first miss of the game here for Big Baby. On the switch, Brewer being checked by Mitchell. Wolford sees the double team and drops it off to Joachim Noah. LSU went to double team inside, but nobody rotated down to the baseline, and uh, Florida made that look easy. That's that's just an LSU defensive breakdown there by the uh, weak side help. Mitchell, nice scoop to the hoop by Daryl Mitchell. Yeah, he's a three-point shooter, but what goes uh, underrated a little bit by Daryl Mitchell is his ability to explode off the dribble like we saw right there. Ankle looked fine there, Tim. I think because he had had his first ankle injury, and it actually happened in the Vanderbilt game in the regular season in mid-February as Brewer hits. He was more scared than anything else last night when he aggravated it. And you could see the attention that he was getting on the sidelines, but he came back and played quality minutes in the second half. Meanwhile, Florida has not missed from the floor. They're a perfect three for three and lead it eight to four. And Corey Brewer is a streaky three-point shooter. He shoots well in a game with the uh, inside strength. Look out. Mitchell feeding Lazar, and there's a foul. The goal against Joachim Noah. So we've talked about the play in the paint, that this would be a factor, and off the dribble, explode right by the Florida defense, Daryl Mitchell. And then inside, here comes the double team. There's no rotation behind. That's, that's too easy. Great pass right there by Horford to Joachim Noah. You think about it, not only are these the most talented teams, Joe, but they're also playing the best at the end of the season that this conference really has to offer. Absolutely. You look at John Brady right there, the uh, coach of the year this season. He's won three Western Division championships since he's been in Baton Rouge and two SEC titles. And let's just say that's one of the great upsets in Coach of the Year voting history. Everyone thought Bruce Pearl had that baby wrapped up. Well, Tennessee lost three of their last five games, and I think that's what really pushed the nod over to John Brady. And again, remember, the coaches voted that's right. for John Brady on that, in that award. I told John he's imminently more likable, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell he's in a good humor. I think he's picked up, Joe, on the looseness of his team. I think so, too. Yeah, they, they, they just looked so relaxed last night. It was amazing. Humphrey. Rebound taken down by Tasman Mitchell. Playing with a lot of confidence is LSU. They, there's no pressure on them in this tournament. They've already secured a high seed. They, if they can win the tournament, Tim might go to a number two seed. I would agree. Lazar going reversal. Davis takes it right away from Noah, and he goes reversal. And the tip in by Tasman Mitchell. Tasman Mitchell has just got a nose for the basketball. He's a kid that just, he just knows how to play the game. He's, not the great athlete, we talked about that last night, but handles it, shoots it, tips in offensive misses, just does a lot of things for the LSU team. He understands the game unlike many freshmen, that's for sure. Brewer pops out high, Mitchell late rotating over. Davis clears for LSU. Tied at eight, not quite four minutes gone here in Nashville. Tim Brando, Joe Dean Jr., happy to have you with us. Mitchell on the wing, up three. Look at him hustle for that offensive rebound. Lazar feeds the big baby, feed and fan the big fella, and they induce the foul in the lane when we come back. The best of the conference is presented by Chevrolet at American Revolution. In the Southeastern Conference, three-point field goal leaders in this tournament, Torian Green, how about that? Not bad, huh? Well, 100% is pretty good. I'd say you can't beat that. <laughs> and uh, he and Tasman Mitchell both at that uh, marvelous mark. And you see the numbers on Torian through the course of the year. Son of Sidney Green. He really lit up New York early in the Coaches versus Cancer Classic. I think got a lot of national attention. And then on that roll to a 17-0 start, got the team to a number two ranking nationally. He has been really the spark for this club. Davis rattles one home with a fall away. Over Chris Richard. The one thing Davis is going to find today defensively from Florida, bigger, more powerful players than he saw last night from Vanderbilt. Watch the fade. The fade up. <laughs> <laughs> and he knocks it in. Oh, well, let's check out your nose. Did you ever you ever have one thrown back at you like that? Oh, uh, many times. I'm sure Altel appreciates that little uh, spot you gave him. Dorian Green leaving it for Hodge, who's just coming to the game. And on the wing, Lee Humphrey. Boy, he has that spot marked here on this floor. He has been money from the wing 
with that jumper. And Hodge just did a great job of drawing the defender off of Humphrey by the penetration to open up Lee Humphrey. And you give him any daylight, and he is just unbelievable. Mitchell with the penetration, a nice floater by the Southern Assassin, according to John Brady out of St. Martinville, Louisiana. Daryl Mitchell, really, Tim, in the seven-game win streak, which LSU is on right now, has not shot the ball that particularly well. You see the uh, moving screen there by Horford. Well, fans follow the JP Sports and all of its coverage for SEC basketball all season long by logging on to jpsports.com. Check out the Toyota Info Center. The Toyota Info Center on jpsports.com, your online destination for JP Sports coverage of SEC hoops. Also, at the five minute mark here in Nashville, other games. Duke against that feisty group from Wake Forest trying to play the role of uh, South Carolina in the ACC tournament. There's the dump down. Well triggered by Temple. How about that pass from Temple inside the Tasman Mitchell? And LSU ran the old version of the Auburn shuffle where they just ran a little shuffle cut and we got a technical on Billy Donovan. Yeah, Doug Sermons lighting up Billy Donovan. I think he felt there was contact which freed Tasman Mitchell. Well, nice cut by Mitchell right here. He, ah, he's looking it. for the wraparound is what yep. Billy Donovan yep. wanted uh, that freed Mitchell up for the little short uh, layup opportunity there. Uncharacteristically, Mitchell throws up a brick at the free throw line, but I agree with Coach Donovan. I mean, when you see that, that's that's almost one of those automatic fouls. The wraparound right. move, swimming underneath. Now, not a lot of contact in that particular case, but that's usually an automatic whistle. And it's an advantage-disadvantage situation. Oh, that gave Mitchell the advantage there. No the, question. the official is right on the baseline and can see it, and that's why Billy Donovan was upset. Right. He earned that technical, and he wanted to earn that technical. Wanted to set a, you know, make a point, and uh, he made it strongly. And LSU with a little full court pressure right here. You see the field goal shooting early. Both teams uh, very warm here at the outset. John Brady won an over and back. Now didn't that, get it. Now you got to have both feet and the ball in the front court for it to be an over and back. That Noah only had one foot in the front court. Adrian Moss is coming to the game along with Richard. They're playing a little high-low game now. Moss with Mitchell on his hip. Outstanding defense. Humphrey's got to shoot it. Length of the floor to Garrett Temple. How about the uh, Peyton Manning-style home run pass there by Tasman Mitchell? We talked a lot about him. Just another example of the little things that Tasman Mitchell does to help the LSU team. Seven nothing run now for LSU in the last minute and 15 seconds. The lead by six. Richard. It's the shooter's touch to make it 17 to 13. Nice high low set there. Noah in the low post drew the double team from Lazar, which opened up Richard at the foul line. And nice little facing jump shot. Good execution by the Florida offense. And now they drop into a 2 3 zone. There's the difference in the paint. LSU very effective, and that's right to where they are right now. Oh, it would have counted had it gone. Darnell Lazar is fouled. Take a look at this. And this is interesting because a lot of people believe the shot clock violation means the official should stop play, but they don't when the ball is still in play. Exactly. If, if the defensive team rebounds the ball when the shot clock goes on, on, they will allow the team to play on, which they did with LSU there, and that allowed Garrett Temple to get that layup. And uh, in talking with Hank Nichols, right. and we did just this past week, he explained that that is a judgment call on right. the part of the officials. Exactly. You have to understand when to play on as opposed to awarding the ball on out of bounds. If the two teams in that situation were battling for the rebound, they would have called the shot clock violation, right. but the ball landed clear, cleanly in the uh, hands of Tasman Mitchell. And look at him again. I don't think a lot of fans necessarily know that, but that was a... Uh, well officiated situation with the clock there. Daryl Mitchell from deep. Davis trying to keep it alive, but Richard finally corrals it for Florida. Florida with three big guys, three post players in the game. Richard, Moss, and Noah. 
We're looking at 6'11 and a couple of 6'9 guys. A lot of size to battle Glenn Davis from the Gators. Torian Green over Mitchell. Look out if he warms up. That's his first tray. 17-16, LSU by one. We'll watch the effectiveness of the Florida zone and how LSU attacks it. They're going to run Mitchell down on the baseline to try to open up some looks for him. Temple on the win. He hit a pair of threes last night. Those shots are generally going to be allowed to him. He's no more as a defensive specialist than anything else for John Brady's team. Well, you see the three-point shooting of the six field goals made by Florida. Four of them are from downtown. And the good news, if you're an LSU fan, you've given up four threes, but you still lead. There's the double. Mitchell. Great job by Tasman Mitchell. Uh, creates the steal. Now numbers. Oh, Lazar lost his dribble. That was a, a three on no one, and LSU failed to convert. Good touch pass by Hodge into Moss, and Adrian Moss collects it. Tell you, Walter Hodge, the freshman from Puerto Rico, has really played well in recent weeks for the Gators. And the good ball movement by Florida, which is a trademark of the Billy Donovan teams, got a wide open look from about five feet. That's just excellent ball movement execution by the Florida offense. So back to back touchdowns and extra points converted in runs for both teams. Florida now on a 7 0 score of their own. Well, she was hot as a firecracker to start the game last night against Vandy. A little bit cold here starting against Paul. Moss in traffic. Timeout. Florida leads it by three with 10.43 remaining. John Brady wants to talk about it. Well, South Carolina did something today, Joe Dean Jr., that has not been done in this tournament's history, and that is beat Kentucky on semifinal Saturday. How about that? Well, it was a great performance by Dave Odom's team. Uh, unbelievable shooting performance late in the game by Torrance Kinsey and, and uh, uh, Sheldon, Bryce Sheldon. And when Kentucky did what they did to Balkman, he still managed to make hustle plays. Exactly. And, uh, made all the plays down the stretch. Just a, an outstanding performance by the Gamecocks. Well, Altel presents our Altel SEC trivia question. Who was the first commissioner of the SEC? He was a former governor of what state? Stay tuned and we'll have the answer for you in the second half. Gator fans ready to put the chomp down. They have a more healthy contingent here than does LSU. And um, I'll be interested to see how many Kentucky fans remain for the finals tomorrow because as you know they they not only love the Big Blue, they also love basketball. Absolutely, they do. Ben Food turns it over just into the game. Dorian Green over Mitchell, counted in a foul. Well, ben Food last night came off the bench against Vanderbilt. In his first play, he turned it over, and he did the same thing here this afternoon. Television timeout with 10.25 remaining. Gators trying to dig in. Florida leads LSU here in Nashville, 22-17. The unforced error by LSU led to this Torian Green bump layup. Nice continuation off the glass. And you see it from the other angle. Tasman Mitchell, the freshman, got him. But uh, nice strength there by the point guard, Torian Green, to get the ball in and get himself to the free throw line. The Gators are absolutely lighting up the scoreboard. They are 9 of 12 from the floor, 75%. Four of seven from downtown. They haven't missed a two-point field goal shot yet. They're five of five inside the arc. And Torian Green gives them a six-point lead. Here comes the three-quarter court pressure. It's a one-two-two zone. They'll look to trap up the sideline. That's the way to attack. Into the middle. Davis. Magnum rolls just into the game. And a foul spotted against the Gators. 
Davis was taking it inside. Well done by LSU. You attack a zone press in the middle of the floor. They it threw it to Casman Mitchell. He turned and drove it and found Davis underneath for the layup. Who, uh, of course, missed and Roll was there to put the follow in and draw the foul. In talking with the Florida coaches before today's game, they commented that this young man right here, Magnum Roll, has impressed them to go along with the rest of that front line. And uh, understandably, they feel that way because he actually began to emerge as a complimentary player on the front line for John Brady in LSU's loss at Florida when Thomas was in foul trouble. He came in, and LSU actually got a an eight-point lead in the second half with him on the floor. Yeah, I have to be there that day, Tim. He uh, he came in and gave LSU some great minutes off the bench. Uh, still a work in progress. He needs strength, but uh, is playing with more confidence now. Only a 56% free throw shooter, as evidenced. Oh, a nice pass by Mitchell to Tasman Mitchell. And a good catch, too. Yeah. Mitchell had to reach down low to catch that ball and then get it up into the basket very quickly. Just continue to be amazed with all the little things on the floor that Tasman Mitchell does. Nice pass. Magnum roll in there to bother Richard. That's a tie ball with the arrow to Florida. You know, the thing you notice most about LSU, their ability to push. Here's Daryl Mitchell. That ankle looks really good. It does. And watch the catch here. Well, you couldn't quite see it, but it was a low bounce pass that Mitchell caught down low and brought it up and got it in the basket quickly. One of the things about Florida, Tim, John Brady will tell you, they go inside. Look at that. That reminds one of Tyrus Thomas, yes, doesn't it? Yes, it sure does. But Florida has big people inside who can score and make things happen in the lane. You have a tendency to think they're a three-point shooting team, which they are, but they do like to go inside a lot. Uh, Darrell Mitchell off the feed from Ben Food, and last night, Food played more minutes than he had played since very early in the season. And uh, and he told me, because we talked, he said, uh, yeah, I really felt comfortable. I got more confident as the game went on. I think he knows today he's going to get even more minutes. And that's what's happened with not only him, Magnum Roll the same way. They, the more the minutes they get to play, the more comfortable they become and, and, and their confidence grows. And if they produce, which they have, it gives their head coach, John Brady, confidence in them. Rude left free, leaves it for the trailer, Davis. Mitchell again on the wing. Leaves that one short. Rude tries to tap it out. Out of bounds to Florida with 8.45 remaining. How about Magnum Roll, huh? Well, again, he's so long, 6'11". Now, why? This is against a great player, Noah. And you just see the length of Roll to get up from the help side position and knock it off the glass and into the LSU arms where they can run down and play some offense. Just beautiful play there by the freshman. Look how productive the Gators have been. Nine field goals, seven dishes. And yet they're only up one point to show you how good LSU is. Well, the, both teams are efficient. And the other thing you notice, Joe, is the chemistry that both teams have on the floor. Yeah. These players like one another. Absolutely. Nice work by Corey Brewer running the curl. 25-22. You either have to switch that or have somebody help over from the other side, but Florida executing their offense right now with precision. Uh, of course, the shooting percentages bear that out as well. Arnell Lazar was down low, looking for that high-low pass from Roll. Davis getting a little time on the pine. Darrell Mitchell trying to keep it alive. Pulled away by Joachim Noah. Davis and Tasman Mitchell on the bench with Magnum Roll and Ben Vode joining up with Lazar, Temple, and Darrell Mitchell. Nice, nice rebound by Richard, but he threw it right into the hands of Derek Temple. Florida back man to man now. Played about three possessions of zone. Temple off the curl, not there. Lee Humphrey has Corey Brewer with him. Runs right into Temple. Actually, Mitchell fell down, flopped. There was no call. Probably a good no call on the part of the officials. John Brady a little upset. But I think Darrell got caught flopping, and uh, Tony Green would have none of it. Timeout. Florida by three. It is the 20th anniversary of Jefferson Pilot Sports coverage of the SEC basketball tournament. And it has been another classic here in Nashville, Tennessee. Florida leading LSU 25 to 22. 
And you see Billy the Dean, once known as Billy the Kid, and uh, talk about his family often. And there's his father, William, known him since uh, Billy was playing in Providence. And he's one of those guys, every time you see him at the O-Dome, at the O'Connor, hey, kid, how you doing? Great to see you. <laughs> Can't imagine being anywhere else. What a wonderful, wonderful man Absolutely. and basketball family they have. And don't you know he's just having a ball follow, following his son's team around and watching them play. Good stuff. Big baby still out of the game. Only two points and two rebounds for him. Hasn't been much of a factor. Humphrey. Temple got him from the backside on the top of the head. Florida much more active offensively here this afternoon in LSU. LSU a little bit casual in their defense, not rotating well and shutting down drives to the basket. John Brady didn't like the, the call right there by Doug Serbis. But let's give credit to the Florida Gators. They, they, are, they are efficient, sharp, running their stuff well, and getting good shots. Bell South Fast Access DSL is the official provider of internet services for JP Sports during SEC Tournament Week. Ben Vu checks out. Tasman Mitchell back on the floor now with Temple, Harold Mitchell, Magnum Roll, and Darnell Lazar. The Gators have Adrian Moss, Joe Kim Noah, Humphrey, to go along with Florian Green, and Wertos is coming to the game for the first time. David Wertos, the youngster out of Puerto Rico. Explain to me how the leading three-point shooter in the league misses two foul shots. <laughs> He needs to go to the Dixie basketball camp to work on that uh, knee bend at the free throw line. We can do it, Timmy, at yes. Dixie basketball camp. I knew you could. Absolutely. And that would be somewhere in Mississippi, would it uh, not? It is, and some in Mississippi. Some in uh, Mississippi. And by the way, Garrett Temple's a product of the Dixie basketball camp. When you say somewhere in Mississippi, you really mean Summit, Mississippi. <laughs> Summit, exactly. <laughs> Tied at 25 with six and a half and counting. Orion Green. Off the front rim, Garrett Temple runs it down. Green takes it right away. Up and over roll. Good defensive work by Magnum Roll. Temple length of the floor to Darrell Mitchell. And he goes down. And when he does, there's a great deal of concern. Tim, I'm going to tell you something. Darrell Mitchell right there knew that he had no chance to make that basket. But he also knew that uh, Moss had no chance. I believe it was Moss had no chance to get to him to, to, to take that charge. So it had to be a foul exactly. at the very least. And that's just simply taking it in to get to the foul line. That's all that is right there. And what courage by a young man who's injured, who's got a bad ankle to take it in like that. Uh, you know, the competitive juices flow in March. John Brady told uh, Dave Baker going into halftime just after the Mitchell yep. injury last night, he won't play. He was done. He's done. Uh, I, believe, I believe the senior Daryl Mitchell had other ideas. Yeah, he's like, hey, and I, I talked to Butch Pierre, the able assistant to John Brady about it. I said, you know, because you played in this league. He said, yeah, he did. He, he played the senior card. Exactly. Butch, Butch told me that uh, you see there, Butch, right behind Coach Brady. He said, look, he said, this young man knows it's his last rodeo. Right. He wants to play in the SEC tournament. But I think at times, particularly in the second half, once Florida um, keeps bringing fresh bodies off the bench, Coach Brady will have to be somewhat judicious with his playing time in the second oh, half. Oh, absolutely. He's got to be very careful. He's going to take Mitchell out right here. And there's a freshman mistake by Magnum Roll, who stepped into the lane before Mitchell Simpson took the free throw. Yep. So a lane violation on the part of Roll. Tigers are struggling at the free throw line early in this game. They're now four for nine at the strike. Full court pressure here by LSU. It's a trapping situation, and they get the steal. Lazar. Tell you what, Tim says Tyler Thomas has been hurt. Lazar has gotten better and better and built his confidence for this LSU team. Four in the game for Lazar. Hodge takes it inside to really no man's land. And another pull for, for LSU. LSU's defense has picked up. Ever since I made the comment, they were a little casual. And I know, you know Coach Brady, he doesn't have any ear sets over there, but uh, <laughs> they have picked up their defense. I'm sure he said something to them at, uh, during the dead ball. That's a ball that's deflected. Nice work defensively by Florida. Turned over by Garrett Temple. That's the sixth committed by the Bayou Bengals. And uh, Glenn Davis, who only has two points, will come back into the game. 
Timeout Gators with 529 remaining. You know what really impressed me about Davis's 28 last night, which was a career high tying 28 points. His last bucket came with seven minutes and 42 seconds left. Joe, a lot of guys, particularly young players, would have said, wait, I could get 40. Right, exactly. And he could have against Vanderbilt. He didn't look at the basket the rest of the way. He just continued to play his game and, and let the game come to him or, or not come to him. You know, he's an amazing personality, a, a kid with a lot of uh, spirit and enthusiasm uh, and, and, and obviously great, great talent. That shot of he and Burt Smith. Yeah, that was classic. Well, the last official night. when he bowled over him was seen around the world last night. And when he got up and hugged him, yeah. that was exactly what Glenn Davis is all about. Absolutely. I would agree. And, you know, we've talked so much about the LSU team, the fact that all the kids on the team are from the Baton Rouge area. And I, I really think that's part of what you're saying. He he didn't really care about scoring 30 or 35 points. You know, his teammates were getting it done around him in a support role, and he was happy about that. Joe Kim Noah with the dump down. Richard goes low and he comes into a face-up situation with these five. When Florida beat LSU in Gainesville earlier this year, they dominated LSU in the paint area, getting the ball inside to Richard, Noah, and Horford. But uh, so far today, LSU's done a decent job. Brewer got away from Tasman Mitchell and then could not convert. Five on four here. Boots and feeds Tasman, and he can can with a jam. 30 to 25, LSU by five, and Mitchell Hansman Mitchell has 10. Very smart play by Ben Voog. He recognized the five on four with Brewer coming late and found Mitchell open. There's a bump by Lazar prior to the shot by Joachim Noah. Yeah, give, give credit to Ben Voog for the recognition of the numbers they had going down the floor. And Mitchell, six foot seven, plays a little stufferino, Timmy. Corey Brewer will trigger it in. Brewer was on the deck after missing a, a chippy after running a beautiful curl. He had gotten away from Tasman Mitchell. And you're right, Ben Hood, uh, read that he had five on four and took advantage. There's Humphrey off the feet from Brewer. Richard on the offensive boards. Gators will run waves of big people at you. I think he is a very undervalued talent. I, I agree 100%. That time, uh, he did a nice job staying home because his man left to run out and contest the Humphrey three, and that allowed Richard to get that offensive rebound and lay it back in. Offensive foul goes against Ben Vood. Moving screen on the baseline. And don't forget the Dr. Pepper shot for a million. Hey, it's coming up at halftime with that dazzling host of ours, <laughs> Dave Baker. Stay tuned to see if someone can make a half-court shot for one million dollars from Dr. Pepper. Always a favorite time of the uh, SEC tournament for all of us. There's the switch. Now, now Tasman Mitchell, the small forward, inside on Richard. Let's see, and they now have switched back. Good job by Darnell Lazar to communicate. See these shooting percentages, Joe, and they're easily the highest we've seen. And I don't know that it's a case of the defense is not doing a good job. I just think both of these teams are so crisp right now. They, they are. It's and hard to stop. I, I would agree. And, and offensively, very skilled. You saw the great pass there by Joe Kim Noah. Bounce pass inside and a little high-low action to Chris Richard. But the offensive talents of these two teams is overshadowing the defense. Look at that. I mean, that's just Daryl Mitchell carving apart Florida's defense, and then Lazar capable of going reversal and knocking it down. Yeah, you know, splitting the trap on the dribble. We saw Rondo do that in the first game for Kentucky. Mitchell the same way. You know, I asked a coach one time, why don't you double team on ball screens? And he said to me, because the guards are too good. They'll, just split, the, they'll split the double team. Both teams able to do damage inside. Big Baby Davis got that foul. From Chris Richard to dazzling Darnell Lazar off a beautiful dime dropped by Daryl Mitchell. We'll be back. Thirty-two twenty-nine. LSU leads it by three here at the Gaylord Entertainment Center. Coming up at halftime, analysis, highlight stats, and more. Plus a Dr. Pepper shoot for a million. All coming up at the break. Presented by Alabama Tourism. You know, there's been some talk because of South Carolina's victory that uh, 
the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee when they look at those bubble teams for at-larges that it might have some effect on, on Alabama's status because of their loss to uh, Kentucky yesterday. Well, uh, you know, I, I, I think I would worry if I was Alabama, but I think you made a good point off air that you talked to Craig Littlepage, the selection committee chair, and he, and he said? He said you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. There's a tendency on the part of the fans, and largely maybe it's a mistake made by the media, that uh, teams that cost at large bubble teams that are taken away because of those automatic bids, and usually the conference in question is who pays first. Tasman Mitchell backs down. But that's not true. Well, it's not true. No, yeah, I, you I have agree. to look at each, for instance, if you were to do that, that would be like saying Syracuse, by winning three games in the Big East tournament, cost Cincinnati a spot. That won't happen. Right. Well, Alabama's definitely deserving with their high RPI, very strong strength of schedule. Oh, their and, schedule was incredibly strong. And 10 and 6 in the tough SEC. I think some of the questions that were asked of teams that were already in by some, it was amazing to me how many people thought, oh, well, maybe you're not in. Well, they're in. Darnell Lazar. A beautiful pass inside. LSU really in scramble situations, Joe, doing a much better job in this tournament than they did in the regular season. Well, you saw the talent of Daryl Mitchell right there on that crisp no-look pass for the easy layup. Noah bumped by Big Baby Davis. Scramble situation, watch that no-look. Great finish, beautiful pass, Daryl Mitchell. Tim. The thing we talked about in the Pontiac Keys today, no big baby love, simply put, attack him offensively if you're Florida, and that's what they're doing right now. With Noah, who's 6'11 and long, putting pressure on big baby on the defensive end of the floor. Well, Noah has two fouls. He's got 20 fouls as points, three rebounds. John Brady's club, though, doing a nice job around him. The announcers for today's game, selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. LSU by four with just, just under two minutes left in the opening half. Chris Richard went for the steal, didn't get it. Davis, not this time. Brewer in traffic, lost it on the way up. He wins the scrum and finds Torian Green. He missed just about everything there. Noah Davis with the outlet to Daryl Mitchell, and there's a quick bump from Hodge. Probably a good foul because LSU had a three on two. Well, once, uh, once he got by Hodge. Well, they prevented the layup by LSU with they, with numbers, but it's going to send Daryl Mitchell, one of the top free throw shooters in the league, to the line. That's the seventh team foul for Florida. So LSU, for uh, the last minute 22, will be in the bonus. At the line for LSU, number 22. These two teams had one and one. really incredibly different starts to their season. We think about it. LSU played a tough schedule, lost five games non-conference by a grand total of 11 points, a heartbreaker to Ohio State, a close one to Cincinnati. Uh, one lost point. a home game to Houston and to Northern Iowa as well. One point loss one at point Connecticut. At Connecticut. Right. And then you look at, at Florida's schedule, they eased out to a 17-0 start and then hit a brick wall once they got into conference play. Billy Donovan knew his team was not as good as many of the fans thought, but they improved over the course of the year, and LSU really matured through those losses right. and won a number of close games in conference play. Absolutely. you got to realize these two teams are very, very young. And the bounds, it will belong to LSU off of the Fletcher. Case in point of the, of the 10 starters today in this ballgame, three freshmen from LSU, a sophomore for LSU and four sophomores for Florida. Very young te teams here on the floor today. But very talented. Daryl Mitchell, the lone senior for LSU. And that's an offensive foul on Tasman Mitchell. Great defense by Corey Brewer, who was selected as the uh, co-defensive player of the year in the SEC, along with Tyrus Thomas, the great shot blocker for LSU. And that's one of the reasons why I that you just saw Corey Brewer defensively on Tasman Mitchell. Well, the combination of uh, Brewer and the uh, incredible improvement in Joe Kim Noah in one season, Joe, I think got a lot to do with Florida's success. Absolutely. 
Moore right on cue, showing what he can do facing you up on the bounce. 39 36. When you got that kind of length and size, when you and put it on the floor, you can just make so many shot opportunities for yourself. Aggressiveness by Walter Hodge, the freshman. What a pass by Daryl Mitchell to Tasman Mitchell. Okay, he's incredible, Daryl Mitchell. Yeah, we thought he wasn't going to play last night. He's not going to play. I tell you, he, he is something else. What a beautiful pass. And again, Tasman Mitchell with a great catch in traffic to get it in. And Tasman Mitchell now has 15 in the game. Wave it off. There's a foul spotted by Doug Shouse underneath. It goes against Darnell Lazar, number two on the junior from Woodlawn High School in Baton Rouge. Well, John is uh, still in uh, postseason form. <laughs> he, he tried to tell Doug Shaw that Tory and Green fell, just fell down, and, Tor and, and Doug Shaw says because he was pushed down. Yes. <laughs> There's a part of John's pedigree that includes Richard Williams, of course, when he was an assistant at Mississippi State, and Richard's relationship with Wimp Sanderson's been well documented. There are times when John gives us a little bit of a throwback, right? A uh, look to the a bygone era. Along the sideline. Tell you what, that was dangerous right there. Florida almost stole that ball right in front of their basket with two seconds to go in the half. This has got to be a catch and shoot real quick. Six tenths of a second left. And Daryl Mitchell makes better of it. And at halftime, LSU leads by three, 41 to 38. Dave Baker has Coach Brady. John, your thoughts on the first half? Well, I thought it was a, a pretty good first half for us. I thought we gave them some easy baskets, particularly early. I don't think we got back defensively a couple times. They made some, uh, some threes early, but I think defensively we settled down a little bit in the second half, played a little bit better. You know, Florida's awful good, and they got a lot of weapons, so I think it's going to be a great another 20 minutes. All right, thanks, John. Okay. Appreciate it. John Brady and his LSU Tigers go to the locker room with a 41-38 halftime lead. SEC basketball is being brought to you by GEICO. By Q Motor Oil. By Bell South. By Cooper Tire and by Pontiac. Tim Brando, Joe Dean Jr., and Dave Neal, our host, along with Barry Booker up in the catbird seat, and uh, Dave Buzz Baker combing the sidelines here on Jefferson Pilot Sports, our semifinal finale. And moments ago, Dave Baker caught up with Billy Donovan. Billy, pretty good job in shutting Glenn Davis down with just two points, and you're still down by three. Well, I don't know. I think what makes LSU so good is uh, I don't know if we did a good job or not, but certainly uh, both the Mitchell guys hurt us. They had real big uh, first half, so um, they're a good team. There's a reason they were 14 and two and won the the championship. They've got uh, a very good team, and they play very well together. All right, thanks, Billy. That's Billy Donovan, Tim. All right, Dave. Thanks. We're underway here in the second half. Timmy, we talked about uh, Florida giving up way too many easy baskets. They gave up 59% shooting to LSU in the first half. So they're going to start in the zone, try to shut down everything in the lane area and force LSU to shoot it from the outside. Tasman Mitchell on the wing. That's what you want in the zone. Force the outside shot, get the defensive rebound, and run it the other way. And a nice defensive play by Tasman Mitchell stepping into the passing lane. Darrell Mitchell down there with Torian Green checking in. And he rattles it home right in front. guard on guard. That's, uh, that's the kind of play a senior likes to make in his uh, final SEC tournament. Yeah, you, you think he's just a three-point shooter, but Darrell Mitchell's much more than that. He can penetrate, drive, and score a lot of different ways. Horford right in front of Darnell Lazar. Well, it has been said that Glenn Davis earned the right to be the player of the year in this conference and I don't want to I don't believe anyone would disagree but if you ask anybody close to the LSU basketball team who the most valuable player on their club would be it would be the guy with the ball right now Darrell Mitchell that's from value to value right there Mitchell the big baby Davis Florida goes back man to man and right away LSU right off the bat goes inside 
and Glenn Davis can put it on the floor, like, just like Joe Kim Noah. I mean, we're seeing a couple of great offensive talent here today, Tim. Yeah, again, I, I think both coaches in hearing their comments to Dave Baker, John Brady going in at halftime and Billy Donovan going out. There's Corey Brewer rattling another home. It's 45 to 42, seven in the game for Brewer. You know, coaches always want their team to clamp down defensively, but I think they both recognize that these are the two best offenses that they're going to play. Absolutely, and that's why we're seeing so many high percentage shots and scores. Davis fighting for it with Horford. That's a tie ball. And the arrow is to LSU. Not quite two minutes gone by. Tigers led by as uh, the Mitchell guys were getting to him. 31 between them. Darnell Lazar, a strong compliment with eight. And you see Torian Green with Noah and Brewer leading the way for Florida. Horford working in on Lazar. No help. And he takes advantage. That's his first basket of the game, Horford. And you can see what Billy Donovan said at halftime. We're going to take it inside against LSU. That's how they beat LSU earlier in the year in games. They attacked the, the box area, went to uh, Horford, Chris Richard, Joe Kim Noah, and put a lot of pressure on Davis and Lazar. And a couple at the line. That's his first field goal. He has four for the, for the afternoon. Skips past the Darrell Mitchell. And he gives it up to Garrett Temple. Torian Green has numbers. Horford's the trailer. He's got it. Missed the dunk. And Garrett Temple is fouled. That's a block against Brewer. Now we talked about Al Horford in the, in the uh, low post there against Darnell Azar. Watch him kind of back him in, turn, face. And shoot the ball right in the basket. Great job by 42 there, Al Horford. A lot of times when, when players miss dunks, it's because they're trying to be a little too flashy. That time, Horford really was not doing that at all. He just had so much impetus in the slam that it came out. And there's a foul as Tasman Mitchell goes back up on the offensive boards. It goes against Al Horford. That's number three. And Billy Donovan will have to make an adjustment. Joe Kim Noah looking to come in. And he'll also turn to Adrian Moss uh, to take Horford out of the proceedings. Well, that's what Barry Booker was talking about at halftime, the depth of Florida, especially on the inside. you got four guys, 6'9 or better, for Florida who can rotate in and out of those post positions. LSU basically with Glenn Davis, and then you've got Lazar, who primarily is a reserve player when Paris Thomas is in for LSU. So. You know, that's a potential problem for the Tigers here in the second half. I think that's one of the reasons Magnum Roll will see more playing time uh, in the second half of this game. Uh, he has uh, given Coach Brady a few extra minutes. Speaking of Tyrus Thomas, you notice he's wearing the jersey, the LSU throwback jersey over there on the bench, sitting next to Ben Brood. I talked with uh, Tyrus before the game. He's holding that ML car towel. I said, um, so how do you feel? He says, oh, man, it's killing me. <laughs> I just want to play so bad. And you know it is. He'll, um, he hopes to be uh, working out and get clearance on Tuesday. It's lateral movement that's the problem. He can run up and down. There's Noah. Count it and a foul. Tim, I think LSU's got to think about double teaming Noah in that situation. Uh, they're allowing Big Baby to take him one-on-one. -on -one, and Noah is so long and elusive. You see him with a free foot move. And he likes it right there, but he is so skilled for a big guy that I think John Brady might want to think about that. He, this is what happened to LSU in Gainesville. They attacked with Noah, Richard, and Horford inside. LSU did not double team, and it, and it cost him. Davis now has three fouls, and that's another concern for John Brady. Three and a half minutes deep into the second half. The player of the year has three fouls. Mitchell on the dribble drive, leaves it for Lazar. Darnell not ready for it. It's a turnover. Green rejects it by Temple. Noah, yes, and a foul. A significant run from the Gators and their fans, and they are in. The turnovers lead to this right here. On the glass, the big fella running the floor. Oh. 
<laughs> That's good stuff right there. What a player this young man is. Now Lazar has three fouls to go along with Davis. Florida's zone has been effective here. Again, trying to clamp down around Davis in the lane. Hope LSU does not shoot a good percentage from the outside. Billy Donovan has made his adjustment at halftime. Darrell Mitchell from the wing. Darrell Mitchell stays with it. And an inside foul will go against Joachim Noah. Darrell Mitchell, the last seven games I mentioned, has not shot the ball particularly well from three. And I think the bad ankle is part of the reason for that. Timeout. Gators have claimed a one-point lead. The best of the conference is presented by Chevrolet tournament blocks leaders. Brandon Wallace had a major role in today's South Carolina win, as did Ronaldo Bachman as they beat Kentucky to advance into the finals tomorrow. Stephen Hill of Arkansas. 48-47 our score here in the second semifinal of the day. Tim Brando, Joe Dean Jr. How does South Carolina match up against either of these teams? They beat Florida twice this year. Well, I think obviously uh, Florida would love another shot at South Carolina. LSU uh, won in Columbia yep. right toward the end of the season by three points. Secured so, secured the SEC outright title there. I mean, I think South Carolina uh, certainly thinks they can play with either one of these teams. And, 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 they, and they will have obviously more at stake tomorrow than either one of these teams. Davis fouled as he's quickly doubled. Noah and Richard. Defensively, you have just got to discipline yourself not to reach in for the basketball. If you're in a zone and, and the ball goes into a great talent like Glenn Davis, you've got a double team without reaching in. You don't want to put this guy on the foul. Line. Not at all the kind of uh, day that he had last night. Glenn Davis with almost as many fouls as points. The one thing about this fellow, he, he just keeps on keeping on. And he can score in waves and get rebounds in waves. Absolutely. And the great thing about him, and you talked about the chemistry of the LSU team while they're the conference champs, he doesn't really care who scores the point. That's right. You know, he had the great night last night, but today's not his day. It's, it's uh, more for the Mitchell guys and uh, some others. Now LSU's back zone, 2-3. Humphrey off the side of the backboard. That was a nice job of Davis. Noah had the ball low, and Big Baby Davis tied him up, and it led to a deflection, and it's out of bounds to LSU. Maybe the thing about the LSU bigs that you notice more than, than most are the, the quality of hands that they have, both in catching passes down low and in getting tie ball situations, loose ball circumstances. Tough pass there by Davis. And as Torian Green comes away with the ball, he's fouled by Garrett Temple. But well, Glenn Davis has as good a hand as I think I've ever seen for a big guy, Tim. When, when the ball's anywhere around him, he's, it's like a vice yeah. on, on that thing. I mean, he just grabs it, and it, you're not going to get it away from him. Well, think about how many passes we saw Darrell Mitchell throw to Tasman Mitchell in traffic, and Tasman made the catch. Exactly. Uh, he's another one of those guys. That, the small forward for LSU that uh, has outstanding hands. Torrey and Green off the front iron. Tasman Mitchell collects the rebound. LSU's gone zone the last two trips. Florida overloads that side of the floor for Green and Humphrey and have missed two threes there. Magnum roll will come in on the next dead ball. There's Davis in traffic. Unable to get that one to fall. Green leaves it for Humphrey. Six minutes gone here in the second half of our final semifinal matchup of the day. Noah feeds Mitchell. Oh, Tasman Mitchell got in his way. And hustle play by the Gators. Wonderfully done as Moss goes into Mark Womack, the SEC Associate Commissioner, to save that one with a deflection. Jefferson Pilot Sports and Aarons are teaming up for our biggest giveaway ever in the boatload of prizes contest. Log on to jbsports.com, register to win a brand new boat filled with prizes, including a big screen home entertainment system from Aaron's. Visit jbsports.com for official rules and regulations. 
Noah with the flush. And if you want to know why you don't play zone defense, that's the reason. Because anytime a shot goes up, there's not a blockout responsibility. You, you have to block an area. And Noah went into the crease of the middle of the zone and got the foot the put back. Mitchell feeds Magnum Roll. Deflected by Moss. Adrian Moss comes in and just uh, brings that kind of energy to the low block that Billy Donovan wants. Yeah, watch this right here, Timmy. You see where Noah is. He's going to come right down the lane on the miss. Nobody blocks him out in the middle of the zone for the putback. LSU turns it over, and the Gators get it back. They've committed nine today, and Florida leads it by two. Both coaches have made the adjustment and it slowed the pace of the game down it, considerably. Yes, it has. And, and they've protected the basket better. A lot too many layups in that first half. I mean, both teams just shot incredible percentages because of all the layups that shot. We don't have near as many layups in the second half, and the defenses are tightening up. Out of bounds, last touch by LSU. Florida will have it underneath their own basket. Not a lot of energy in the building either, Tim. You know, the first game, obviously, with all the Kentucky fans, we had a, a, lot, of, a lot of energy. South Carolina played great. Uh, this, this game, I don't know, just uh, neither team has separated themselves. Well, the crowd seems lethargic to okay, me. Let me say this to you. If it's uh, LSU and South Carolina in tomorrow's final, our friends at CBS will hear a lot of squeaking tennis shoes <laughs> because there is a very weak contingent from LSU and the same could be said for South Carolina in terms of fan support. And I think if the Kentucky fans, the ones that stay, might help uh, keep the building full. Pal committed by Darrell Mitchell, his first. We've talked a lot about Joe Kim Noah today, the 6'11 sophomore. He got a nice pass from Horford to start the game. And you see him put the ball on the floor. Nice spin move, the free foot over Davis in the foul. And then coming down the lane, the flush off the missed three-point shot by Humphrey. And uh, Joe Kim Noah showing a lot of uh, variety in his offensive game. That will shoot back man to man now. Good, this is a good change. There's the double. Richard counted in a foul. Got to get there quicker. Great job by Richard to catch the ball and turn to the middle before Magnum Roll could get there for the double team. Nice offensive move right there by the big fella, Chris Richard. That's good by number 32. Tip back right there by the Gators. That's well coached by Billy Donovan. Missed free throw. If you can't get it, just tip it back out. Maintain possession. Green. And Roll, who picked up that foul a moment ago, gets caught up in the fray, and it's last touch by Moss. LSU Simpson, number four, Ben Bowden. 14, Garrett. Full court pressure here by the Gators. Man-to-man pressure, Ben Boo again to break that down. Here comes the trap. Now you got numbers. Excellent job here. Jasmine Mitchell with the pull-up. Doesn't connect. Florida by four, looking to get on a roll. There's not been much separation between these two all afternoon. A 7-0 run for Florida at one point, out to an early lead. LSU answered. Got to lead themselves. Changes since. Moss. Loose ball collected by Vood. So Ben Vood on the floor now with Daryl Mitchell, Tasman Mitchell, Magnum Roll, and Darnell Lazar. Kind of a, kind of a makeshift lineup then for LSU. Well, I don't think there's any question. This is John Brady realizing that next week is important too. <laughs> Absolutely. He's being very judicious. This is a team that's not as deep. And fatigue, particularly mental fatigue, is something he's concerned with. Darrell Mitchell still out on the floor. That might be one of the uh, bigger surprises is that he's playing a lot of minutes and frankly has been extremely productive. Four 
Dorian Green on the pop out. Blows right by and then leaves it for Adrian Moss on the wing. Mitchell, what a feed inside to Lazar again. Great bounce pass by Daryl Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell's been the assist guy today for LSU. And give credit, too, to Darnell Lazar, who got himself open on the baseline and made a nice reverse move to get it in, as Billy Donovan wants to talk about that. Again, they just don't want to give up those layups, and that's what LSU's been able to get. 10-13 remaining. Florida leads it by a deuce, 52-50. to Oh, the St. Martinville savvy. Inside for the deuce. During the first half, we asked this all tell SEC trivia question. Who was the first commissioner of the SEC? He was a former governor of what state? All right, Joe, I'm, I'm going to take a shot and say Tonto Coleman, and the state was Mississippi. Yeah, no, I'm wrong. Well, you, you got <laughs> the state correct. Who's Martin Connor? Is, <laughs> is, that, is that Bull Connor? You, you know, I, there was a Bull Connor from Mississippi that was a heck of a football coach. Fans of John Stennis. That's not him. Be, fans of John Stennis will not be happy with you. <laughs> and I and you went to school there for crying out loud. I know it. <laughs> don't don't t don't tell anybody. <laughs> 52 to 50, the Gators with a two point lead, and uh, it's amazing the numbers in this game. Yeah, Tim Scott McKinney gave us a great stat at the break. Uh, points in the paint for both teams, 30 to 30. How about that? Warford foul. Inside will go against Magnum Roll. LSU foul, number 15. Timeout with 9.58 remaining. Who plays South Carolina? The Cinderella story tomorrow. Yes, it has been uh, from the heart all through this uh, magnificent postseason weekend that we've had here in Nashville, Tennessee. Tim Brando, Joe Dean Jr., Dave Baker, and uh, Dave Neal, happy to have you with us for this uh, finale of our coverage on Jefferson Pilot Sports. A wonderful season, and for us, it comes to an end after today's game. We pass the baton to our friends at CBS for the NCAA tournament next week. My friend Vern Lundquist and uh, Bill Raftery will be in to do tomorrow. Saw them, again. saw them yesterday. Sure did. Speaking of the governor, <laughs> it's always like seeing a guy that's yeah, on a float. There you go. One of the real legends, one of the men that I really looked up to in the business coming up, Vern Lundquist, longtime Cowboys announcer, and yes, sir, at the Masters, one of the true broadcasting icons. Florida by four, just under ten remaining. Florida's going to stay in that 2 3 zone. Again, just trying to keep it off of Big Baby in the lane. And operating at the point. Davis with roll, and Big Baby takes it in. Yes, and a foul. Only a matter of time, right, before he gets it done. I mean, it's like a Mack truck going through that lane when he caught it at the top of the key. I don't know how you stop this. I mean, watch the strength. I mean, this is against, look at all the orange shirts around him. And he just muscles it through there, gets it off the glass. The double whammy there is that it's the fourth foul on Al Horford. And, you're, and in Al Horford, I mean, you're talking about, in my opinion, one of the strongest players in the league. Absolutely. I mean, 6'8", 240, physical, well-built. And Glenn Davis just went through him with ease. As tough as it's been on Big Baby, he's a bucket and three rebounds away from a double-double. That's amazing. <laughs> so it just, at some point, it comes around for him. Some other scores on this uh, conference tournament weekend. Well, wouldn't you love to see Indiana make the Big Ten final? Mike Davis has been undefeated since he announced his, his uh, resignation. A lot of people thinking that Mike Davis will be coaching in this part of the country next year. He's giving himself quite an on-air audition. He sure is. In the Big Ten tournament. Foul goes against Garrett Temple. That's number three on Garrett. That's team foul seven on LSU, so Gators in the bonus from here on out. Only three team fouls committed by Florida. In contrast, 
that'll get Corey, Corey Brewer, Corey Brewer the sophomore going from for the Gators, Portland, Tennessee. Portland, Tennessee, about 30 miles north of here. He was recruited by Vanderbilt, decided to go to Florida. Well, Bell Self Fast Access DSL is the official provider of internet services for JP Sports during SEC Tournament Week. Once intersectional play begins, and that's when the NCAA Tournament opening round starts, I think Brewer is one of those matchup nightmares for teams. He's one of those guys that his floor game and who he guards from time to time can be a real issue. You know, definitely defensively, he's a guy that can really shut down a perimeter score, regardless of how big the guy is. Look at the orange shirts. Yep, great job defensively by Florida. Davis gets called for the travel. Let's take a look at our top 25 teams in the nation presented by Q Motor Oil. And uh, we mentioned this yesterday. None of these teams at the very top, and that's what I think is going to make next week so much fun. As good as they are, none of them are dominant. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think, Tim, you've got 10, 12, maybe 15 teams on that list that right can there win, win that, the that can win the whole thing. Exactly. And I think probably of the 25 teams we listed, you could probably add another 10 of those teams that have the ability to go to the final four. I would agree with that, too. Noah misses a chippy. Including these two teams we're watching right now. Both these teams, LSU probably is going to be a three seed. Now, if they w were to win this tournament, maybe a two. Florida, I would say, a three or a four. Yep. Darryl Mitchell for three. Played 11 minutes here in the second half before either team could hit a three. That's amazing, it considering really what we saw in the first half. Yeah, and, and both coaches do a great job, obviously, with adjustments at halftime. There's no way they were going to allow the kind of shooting percentages that we saw in the first half. Noah, nice play by Joachim Noah. 58-56, Joachim with 15. Tony Green stopping play for the moment. Daryl Mitchell's having a wonderful game. We saw the blow by to start out the game by Daryl Mitchell and the step back, knocks it down. Senior out of St. Martinsville, Louisiana, all SEC first team. Off the dribble and of course has hit a couple of threes here as well. And to double check the score, we're told, the scoreboard clock. And now they're going over to take a look at the replay. Apparently, we want to make sure when the clock started, the clock did not start, and so Tony Green wants to uh, take a look and see how much official time should be remaining on the clock. Gives us an opportunity, Joe, to discuss a little bit the circumstances surrounding seeding in this year's uh, NCAA tournament. If you're LSU, I think they're one of those clubs that really does need a, a higher seed because you, you don't want to play a team like a UAB right. in the opening round no, last year. No, you right? don't. Those kinds of clubs with guards that will pick you up full court make it difficult yeah. for them to play. In the case of, say, Florida, seeding matters if you're going to match up against a team that will slow you down, right, because they're more comfortable in transition. Well, you know, the kind of teams you want to try to avoid in the first round, which could happen to either of these teams, are a team like Bucknell, yep. uh, a team like Winthrop University out of the Big South Conference, who was a 14 last year, took Gonzaga to the wire, who was a three seed. Those are dangerous type teams. They've been teams. to the tournament five of the last seven years. Exactly. Winthrop. Actually, six of the last eight. After this year, that's right. Correct, yeah. But think about, for instance, if you're a three or a four, the percentages are... People get caught up in the seeding thing too much at times. It's more about matchups right. as opposed to seedings. But if you're a three or a four, your chances of losing are far less than if you're a five or six. Well, and I think certainly that was proven last year by LSU playing very well at the end of the year, played Kentucky off their feet in the semifinal here, and then laid an egg in the opening round against UAB. Absolutely, against a very good UAB team. You're exactly right. And I believe here's what we're looking at right here. The, the game clock apparently did not start. And so they're trying to figure out how much time to uh, take off of that game clock. We'll take a timeout with 8.28 remaining. It's 58-56, Gators by a deuce here in Nashville.
The best of the conference is presented by Chevrolet. And the leader in the Pilfer category, Ronnie Brewer, 4.5 a game. Arkansas destined to get there. Daryl Mitchell in that group, along with Darnell Lazar. Well, the uh, Cardinals are locked in conclave across the way. <laughs> the smoke hasn't come out. Yeah, and uh, here we go. Finally, I believe uh, order will be restored. Had a few issues uh, this week with regard to uh, timings and the clock. Tasman Mitchell, another one of those Mitchell guys, as Billy Donovan said, giving Florida trouble. Yeah, that was the very first basket of the game for LSU right there, and the great assist by Darrell to Tasman knocks down the three at 15 points in the first half, and a little up and under, got away with a wraparound there. Billy Donovan got a technical on that one, and then great feed by Ben Boog. And LSU had numbers, and Tasman Mitchell finishes with the flush. Talented freshman. They, we, had a, we had a four second discrepancy and it took about 10 minutes to take care of a four second <laughs> discrepancy. <Yeah. laughs> but we're straight. Uh, hey, it gave us time to pontificate. Uh, say again? Uh, talk, <laughs> talk. Gotcha. Yeah, talk. <laughs> She's trying to run a set there for Daryl Mitchell. That's awesome. Great job by Corey Brewer. And we talked about him, Tim. The, the defensive player of the year in the league along with Tyrus Thomas. And that's just a tremendous play. I mean, he, he's, <laughs> you're going to take a charge from Glenn Davis, you deserve a Purple Heart. I, mean, I believe you saw John Trelor uh, with four fingers up to Glenn. You've got four. So play carefully the rest of the way. John Brady just mouthed he was wide open. Corey Brewer got those quick feet in position to take that charge. LSU out of the zone, they're back man to man. This is their best defense. Florida has done a good job going to the offensive board here in the second half. LSU has got to check out better if they want to have a chance here. Brewer over Tampa Mitchell. Rattles it is. Tough shot right there. The defense was good. Corey Brewer was better. 11 in the game for Corey Brewer, and the Gators lead by four. And the Gators are convinced that they're going to win this game with the zone defense. They think they can bottle up Big Baby inside, and LSU, they don't feel, will be able to shoot it over the top as well. My guess is this is a, a nice warm-up for the opening round game next week for LSU. Someone will get the blueprint of what Florida's done defensively in the second half and say, yeah, that's probably our best, our best bet. Brewer right in front of Davis and playing with four, he could offer little challenge. Yeah, and that could have been a foul there. I mean, hey, the officials elected to make it a no call. And probably the player of the year is going to get a little consideration with that. Lazar, Darnell Lazar and uh, Tasman Mitchell with the answer. Tim, all season long, when LSU really needed a big basket, that young man has done it for him. Big three right there to get him back in this game, down three. Lazar set a wonderful pick, and Mitchell took advantage. Isolation. Richard. Again, no double show. Offensive rebound, Davis, and Big Baby is down. Glenn Davis is on the deck. May have hit his head. I think he's going to be all right. You talk about a gasp. He's letting the trainer know that he's all right. Now he slipped and went right on the back of his noggin. Yeah, I think his head hit the floor, but he's telling the trainer he's okay. He's got the four fouls, so not bad to take him out. Of course, John Brady had to be holding his breath oh. right there. Last night, it was uh, the concern over Darrell Mitchell's ankle being tweaked, and uh, he's going to go back in the game. Yeah. He's got to wait one possession or one um, inbounds pass, and he can come back later. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of amazed by that. Big possession here for LSU. Throw that skip pass against the zone with the back screen. 
Mitchell again this time not not there. But a foul spotted underneath. Well, he's got Chris Richard backing Magnum roll out on the blockout situation there. Big baby will come back. Richard picking up the foul his first. Daryl Mitchell will trigger it in. Davis staying in the game and playing with four fouls. It somewhat indicates to me, Joe, that Davis and Daryl Mitchell and, and some of the other Tigers here have sort of taken some ownership here saying, you know what, we want this thing. Absolutely. We really want to win regardless of uh, how unimportant it may be in the grand landscape of the uh, tournament postseason that begins next week. There's still a championship on the line here. Yep. Green. That's a three-pointer for Torian Green. He has 13, and it's the largest lead of the day for Florida. Timeout, LSU. Pretty sweet follow through there. Yeah, Torian Green, we've talked about him all year, Tim. What a tremendous lead guard. He has been, you saw that three there. And he comes from, of course, a great family, as you mentioned, Sidney Green, who played in the NBA. Former coach now assisting Mike Davis in Indiana. You can make a great case that Billy Donovan and his recruiting system has been an absolute gem in the DNA category. <laughs> uh, Joe Kim Noah, yep. son of Yannick Noah, former right. French Open and Tennis Hall of Famer. And uh, Al Horford, son of Tito Horford, who actually uh, had a cup of coffee in Baton Rouge for a short period at LSU some 20 years ago before heading to Miami. And then uh, Sidney Green being the father of uh, Torian Green. Absolutely. As they say, um, genetics uh, can be a factor, and Billy Donovan well aware of that. <laughs> well, Billy Donovan long has been uh, just a relentless recruiter, and that's the one thing that Jeremy Foley knew Absolutely. when he hired him from Marshall is that he was young, he was energetic, he had uh, the Rick Patino pedigree in terms of how they were going to play the game, full court, pressing, running, and uh, players want to play in that kind of a system, and that's why he's been able to recruit some of the top kids in the country. By the way, Joe, since you mentioned uh, Marshall University, we, we do deeply regret the passing yes. of former LSU assistant coach on their first Final 14 and former Marshall head coach Rick Huckabee. He had become a, a high school coach in North Louisiana, passed away tragically, succumbing to cancer yesterday. Our thoughts and prayers are with he and his family. Knew him for many, many years. Wonderful basketball mind. And he was a great coach, Tim, and a great person. And we were all very sad this week when we heard about Rick Huckabee's passing. Darryl Mitchell on the wing. Rebound cleared by Chris Richard. Humphrey being dogged by Temple. Out of bounds, last touch by Garrett Temple. Indiana with a one point lead at halftime against Ohio State. Green off the bounce. Oh, that's a dagger right there, Timmy. That's a dagger. I mean, you, that's just a great player making a great play. Just to give some separation to the Gators here with under five to go. Is there a run in LSU? We'll see. Davis. Not there. Daryl Mitchell trying to run it down. Out of bounds to Florida. This is off the screen. Big Baby doesn't step out to help. Atari and Green knocks it in. See the three-point shooting story. LSU stone cold against that zone, and that was a key move that really changed the flow of this game as Green really opens it up now. They're up a Baker's dozen. 72-59 over LSU. Davis in traffic. Good feed by Tasman Mitchell in there as they're still going inside against the zone which is what you want to try to do, attack it right in the heart. 10-2 run in the last three minutes. Better help that time by Big Baby on the ball screen. Mitchell on the run out. 
Noah back there, and he had something to do with that defensive play, but he does collect the foul. And that's number four on Joe Kim Noah. Shots coming for Daryl Mitchell when we come back. We'll return after these messages from your local SEC stations. Seventy-two, sixty-one. Florida leads it by 11 with 345 remaining. Taking advantage of really a balanced scoring attack. Dorian Green igniting his team of late. He has 18 points, four in double figures. Mitchell and Mitchell with 39 between them. Big Baby Davis does have 10, but without the help of Tyrus Thomas, it's not been as uh, it's not been as much fun. You could say they scorched the nets as it comes undone. There you go. Torian Green's hit too many of those from downtown, evidently. Darryl Mitchell. They're going to keep an eye on it. They may, in fact, have to change that net if it uh, comes undone. You like a Sandlot game, right? We've played a, a few of those. <laughs> get a chain and put up there. That's right. Some playgrounds don't even have nets. It's when you throw <laughs> up the fader. <laughs> well, she's got to make a run right here if they're going to have a chance against this talented Florida team. Humphrey running it down is fouled by Daryl Mitchell. First and second foul on the St. Martinville senior. Okay, a South Carolina will have a great opportunity to oh, I mean, this is, uh, you think about it, it has happened before. Arkansas came in here in 2000. Yep. One game above 500 with their record. Won four straight days. Right. And we've got Nolan Richardson, a first SEC tournament championship. All those great teams he had lost to Rick Patino in the SEC tournament finals. Right. Including the year they won the national championship. And, uh, you know, you think about Dave Odom's club, they were returning four guys off an NIT championship, probably underachieved during the regular season. Lost a lot of close games. And, uh, and now have an opportunity to get into the NCAA tournament. The ball was deflected by Humphrey. Davis was turning for the rebound, didn't see it. Almost went off his noggin, but it was last touched by Florida. And don't forget, the other team that won four games in four days to win the tournament title was 1985 Auburn under Sonny right. Smith. They were about to fire Sonny that year. Right. Auburn's administration was embarrassed into uh, extending the contract after that. <laughs> Glenn, Glenn Davis slips and falls after putting it in the hoop. Now that could have been dangerous. There must be some perspiration there that we're not seeing because he clearly slipped right underneath the basket after he made it. He scored a lot of points in the middle of this lane as you see him go down against that Florida zone. He had his footing too. He, he had come down fine and then as he, he turned, he slipped and fell. You know, John Brady may be saying to himself, okay guys, make a comeback, but don't get, don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. Yeah. Three minutes and 11 seconds left. Well, if LSU doesn't make a run and Florida wins this, it'll be interesting to see at one point John Brady takes his people out just to avoid any potential problems in the last couple of minutes. When you think about it, this is also a hockey arena. It was very warm outside, so we could have some conversation. Right, from, from the ice underneath. The Predators, of course, play hockey in this building. Humphrey gets it into Horford. And Noah playing with four fouls. Horford gets the kind of roll right over Darnell Lazar. I tell you, the, the, the reason you have to like Florida and their chances in the tournament, if they could get to the Sweet 16, they got the big guys to play with anybody. Davis has it stripped by Torian Green. And Humphrey is fouled. Great job defensively by the Gators, getting the steal. Torian Green looking what good point guards do. Look to pass when you have numbers in two-on-one and three-on-one situations. 
Fourth foul on two. Number 12, Lee Humphrey to the line for the Gators. Two shots. Well, this young man has really worked hard to make himself a more complete player. He's no longer just a catch and shoot guy, Joe. No, he's not. <laughs> I don't understand how he can shoot 50% from three and 58 from 15 feet. <laughs> Last year's champions defeated Kentucky. That was their very first ever yep. tournament championship for the University of Florida. And I think even Billy Donovan would tell you they, they really probably owed a thank you card to LSU for extending Kentucky yep. in the semifinals exactly. to overtime the day before. That was one of the better games you and I have ever been oh, it involved in. It was incredible. I agree. Jasmine Mitchell can't connect. Horford comes down with a rebound. Oh, look at Corey Brewer just snatch it out of the air. Tasman took a little poke in the eye that time. He's grimacing over there. Fans beginning to sense that this one is put away. Orford walked. Torian Green, truly the leader of this team, sophomore from Boca Raton. Well, he's just shot the ball extremely well today. Got the three-point play there early in the first half and a couple of threes and here in the second half. It really iced this game, that being one off the screen right there. Temple on the wing. That one went over the backboard, so it'll be Florida's basketball. Uh, we talked about this last night when Barry Booker was with me on the game between Arkansas and Florida. Those two teams, Joe, were probably best built for conference tournament play where you have to play outstanding for three or four consecutive days. Absolutely. Uh, but the, both teams have tremendous depth. Yeah, and, and, and great big people inside who can score, plus good guard play out front, both Florida uh, and Arkansas. And LSU, I think you add that team in as teams that have the good combination of inside scoring, rebounding, and good guard play. Green was taken out of the air by Lowell. And a violation against uh, the Gators. The ball did not hit the rim. You know, one of the, the points that's been overlooked a little bit in regard to LSU this year is Tack Miner, who yeah. was a starting guard for the Tigers last year, injured his knee early in the season. He's a medical red shirt this year. And, uh, you know, a kid that's got a lot of talent, was not on this team this year, possibly could have helped make LSU even stronger. Well, maybe he um, was humbled somewhat by this team performing so well without him this year. It's Horford gets his win. Horford has 10. Tell you, Tyrus Thomas is going to return next week. There's another steal by Brewer. Here's a lapse in concentration by Davis, and it's 81 to 65. But when Tyrus Thomas returns to this club next week, and presumably he will, you'll find a group of guys that really, until the last couple of minutes here, have really improved their overall game. And uh, listen to the ovation for Noah and Brewer as they go to the final. Well, the Gators have just had it on. And the great pass by Torian Green, Al Horford with the nice finish. The Gators just having a lot of fun right here. Great victory. They've got a chance to win their second straight tournament championship against the team, Tim, which I think is interesting. Beat them twice Absolutely. In, in the regular season. And, and if you're South Carolina, you're probably thinking, Gosh, I would have preferred playing LSU because it's hard to beat a team three times. We hear that often. Right. And they have beaten this uh, Florida team. But you know, Dave Odom's clubs, to me, they're just the kind of matchup in the NCAA tournament. They were wearing, say, uh, another jersey besides South Carolina. They're the kind of team that gives Florida trouble. They, yeah. they slow you down. Yep. They dig into the clock. They run their stuff. They're very disciplined. Well, they are not going to allow Florida to score 81 points tomorrow. You can yeah. count on that. They held Kentucky today to 61 points in their win in the earlier semifinals. So I think Dave Odom, as smart as he is, as good a defensive coach as he is, he'll have some answers for the Gators running up and down the floor and, and taking the ball to the goal. There you see John Brady giving Davis a hug and a pat on the back. Yeah, these guys are disappointed, and, uh, and John Brady is going to be reminding them that it's the prize at stake next week that is of greater concern.
Great job today by Florida. Well done by Billy Donovan. The game plan was excellent, taking the ball inside, as we talked about in the in the open. And the halftime adjustment, Joe. Yep, that's exactly. The his, zone, his own defense was very effective. And uh, LSU will need to work on attacking those zones this coming week, one oh, yes. presumes. Billy Donovan and the Florida Gators advance. They've won 26 this year. John Brady's club moves to 23 and 8. Their seven game win streak comes to an end, but they're destined to be at worst a three seed in the NCAA. Tournament. I think that's exactly where they'll be, Tim. They'll be a three seed as the SEC champ, probably in a region close to Baton Rouge. Yeah. Dallas would pre be a, an area where a lot of people would assume right. they could play first round games. And that's something the tournament selection committee tries to do. Keep those higher seeds within driving distance for their fans. If they can for it, their fans. Exactly. We'll be back with a wonderful wrap up to the week that was in Music City, USA, here on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Stay right where you are. But he he's a he's a real good guy. He's a good friend of mine. And I mean he's not the player of the year for no reason. Sure. And um, I mean we just trying to contain him the best we can, but I mean he got a whole front court and foul trouble, and I mean he's tough. He's been He's been a, uh, such a strength for, for them for such a long time now, especially every single time we play him. So it's, it's just a great feeling to come out with a W right now. So it, it, you have to be so active out there, and you are that way by nature, whether it's going after a, a, a follow or making something happen off the bounce. And that helps you against a guy like that because then he's got to guard you. Well, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get the win, that's what we have. That's our mentality this year. I don't think we have the same offensive power than we had last year. Sure. So, I mean, we have to do it in different ways. And our hustle are, are the reasons why we're, we're going to do well this year. And we just got to keep playing with that passion and that hunger, and we'll be fine. You guys are always motivated by payback. They got you twice this year. Talk about the matchup with South Carolina. Oh, man, this is exactly what we needed. This is exactly what we needed. And in the championship game, it couldn't be better. And um, last game in the SEC for us, SEC tournament championship. I mean, we're defending champs. I mean, this is great. It, it, I, I, couldn't, I can't even explain it. All right, Joe, congratulations. Go get some rest. Uh, Torian Green as well. Joe Kim Noah and Torian Green, they're headed on to the championship game against South Carolina.